Hello and welcome to the next Kit Bash video. Starting at the sketchbook again. So this is going to be for a Tau, Hammerhead, Sky Ray, Devilfish combo XL variant with the four engines that rotate. Again, this is my Nady Sci-Fi wanting four engines that rotate so the craft's like balanced. To me it's either grav plates or engines rotated, not like an unbalanced 50-50 or both. So what I'm going for is splitting a sky in half and chopping the back end off a hammerhead and then gluing them together in some form. And also I've noticed in the models that I've got, the sky ray wing missile launcher affair seems to catch the engine. So I want to see if I can V that off and then it also clears the rail gun again for a degree of sci-fi realness. So let's get started. So now I've got my hammerhead and devilfish chassis. I am gonna mask them up and then cut them with a Dremel. So I will have, I think that will, will be the front one and this one will be the back one. We'll go on like so. But I'm actually gonna cut it around here down that line. So it'll be easier to then attach it straight across with flat plates instead of having to go around the front curved cockpit. And I will now do a cut around the back door to level it off, just to make it easier to then fit them together. So that's the two pieces separated off. It turns out panel saw was the best thing to cut them off with. Uh, Dremel was just taking a while. Obviously scalpel knife without being heated up won't cut through it, uh, but panel saw straight through. To decide on the length of the vehicle, I've decided to use two sprues glued inside to separate the gap and then I can use veneer calipers to measure the gap in between. That way I can cut the pieces out more accurately. I've decided to use foam board to extend the body of the model. It's just easy to use, it's obviously cheap and it works well with the glue gun which will probably be the easiest way to get it to attach. I was going to use some plastic and possibly CNC the shapes out but if anything, it just makes it more difficult to glue together afterwards and it takes a lot longer. Using trial and error with a scalpel knife and the trusty glue gun, got the center of the model glued together. I'm now gonna go over it with filler to fill in any gaps. And then I decided to give it a coat of gray primer just to see how it looks when it's all built up. For the paint on this model, because I do have some eyesight issues, meaning that painting detail is very difficult, painting between the lines is difficult, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try hydro dipping these models, which I don't think I've seen anywhere else do, at least with Warhammer models, so it could be interesting, it could work. It could also be a disaster, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So, I've painted the parts that I'm gonna want black anyway. So basically the feet and the Gatling gun at the front and the little vents along with the engines which I'm also going to try and hydro dip just the tips of see if it works and the wings on the Skyray missile launcher hopefully at least it'll work on the body I'm now going to take these up and prime them in the primer that I was sent with the hydro dipping kit for the engine pods I've used masking tape around the back for the things that I want black. And then this center part will be hydro dipped successfully. And then for the inner engine part, I was struggling with getting a scalpel knife to cut around the masking tape on the inside and actually cut through due to the V'd out slats in it. So I've tried, and I don't know if this will work or this will be a disaster, but I've tried using filleting wax, which you can use for composite materials and stuff to fill in gaps in molds. It's really good stuff to fill in the Vs with a piece of masking tape underneath, which you can just about see there. So hopefully when it's being hydro dipped, I can just cut around that and pull that off, uh, thereby leaving the black Vs. That's the idea anyway, hopefully it'll work, but we'll see. After taping the model up, I've primed it in the gloss white primer that I was sent in this little kit of hydro dipping stuff. Now it's time to cut the hydro drip film out to the correct size, which probably keep it at the actual length of the film that I bought, and then probably about this wide. You can see the pan inside the plastic wrapping. I'm keeping it, at, keeping it in the wrapping for now, not cutting it in front of you, because this is the first time I've tried this, and I know that if you take the film out and get it wet or anything, or leave it in any type of environment where it can get stuff on it, it's basically ruined. 
so I'm going to attempt this. I film it best I can, and then if it works, I will do a follow-up video with a tutorial for hydro dipping little models, whether that's Warhammer or plastic kits in general. There is a minor problem that my sink isn't quite big enough. Should have thought that beforehand, but never mind. So, change of tack. I'm going to try the underneath of it first because um, this is already going slightly pear shaped. just realised my only um, stopwatch is on my phone which is now filming so um, yeah just, uh, some more guesswork there but never mind I think that's probably right so I'll use the activator now wherever my respirator is Oh, I think I left it in for too long, but never mind. See what happens. No idea. Huh. It's kind of worked. That's not bad. I'll take that as the first attempt. I feel like I'm stuck while holding it. Predicament. With a friend, it's better to try this first, it turns out. I'll just put this down somewhere. I also forgot how buoyant that would be. That was quite easy. Now that slightly chaotic first dip is over, you've just got to wash the hydro dip. It has like a slimy surface on it, you have to wash it off so then you can lacquer it. You are meant to wash them for about three minutes to get this slimy coating off. I did however find that the shower head was better at doing this, so I did do that later. And onto the other side of the body. Oh, oh, fuck at that. This is coming up amazingly well to say I'm really not doing this properly. And what I mean by that is when I researched how to actually do hydro dipping, you're meant to have like a bath that is temperature controlled or you at least use a thermometer and make sure the temperature is actually at 33 degrees for the water. You are meant to time how long you have the film in and time in seconds how long you spray the activator on before you put it in. And I've just guessed and it's worked pretty well. Now time for the engine nacelles. Either 
fingers crossed. Get it off my hand. And that will do. Three more nacelles and the drones to do. That one's come out all right. And there we have the hydro dipped parts straight out from hydro dipping and from being cleaned. So they are dull, but they will be getting a clear coat of lacquer to protect them. And then I believe that allows you to pull the masking tape off like around the back of the engines and around the sky ray without actually pulling any of the hydro dip off. It turned out pretty well and it was surprisingly easy. I definitely couldn't do that in a paint job and I couldn't have done that when I had two eyes. Uh, there are slight imperfections which I'm going to fill in with some black paint before I lacquer it and probably just fill the little port areas at the back just with black paint. Um, but other than that, it's come up pretty well. I also decided to experiment and see what the camouflage was like in black paint as a base coat instead of the white. So it basically, you can't really see much white through. You can only see white through where the Hydra Dip has gone thin. So you can kind of see it on the back of there, uh, where basically there's just been less of the film to cover. But then on the full model, it does make it you can see all the colours and there's not actually any white apart from where the hydro dips eventually come off there. However, in black, all you'd see is the lighter colours. I thought I'd do it on the railgun because one, it'll be difficult to do because of the shape. And two, it could just be like a mucky main gun, essentially. It still looks pretty cool though, even in black. So that's just a different style, I guess, using the same pattern. So it's quite interesting how it comes out. So yeah, chaotic, but pleased for a first go. And here is the model lacquered and put together. No, no detail added and I haven't even pulled the masking tape and filleting wax out of the engines yet and other little places. So you can see how I've started on this engine. Turns out I should probably not use the filleting wax. I should probably use something else just because now it's tricky to try to dig out of the Vs. You can see there the engine that still needs to be dug out completely. The detail I'm going to do is going to be maybe some minor weathering, some silver on the guns to make them look less plain, and that's probably going to be about it. To paint in the windscreen on the model, I tried to use the video recorder on magnifier to also record me doing it and to try paint in the gap. However, this turned out to just be way more difficult. Couldn't do it with any light, couldn't do it with the brush. Tried doing it by hand afterwards and failed it as well. So I'm going to try something different for that just to make it look decent enough. On the plus side, I did get these ultra close up shots that show the detail of the hydro dip pattern, which does make me think I'll be able to do it on smaller models as well. And now we have the model back together. All I really did with the, for the painting was some dry brushing on the guns and on the engine nozzles. I'm still trying to dig that filleting wax out of the engine nozzles. You can probably see a little bit in them. Also for the operator's windscreen, I tried to paint it in red. However, I just couldn't do it for the detail. So I've just painted it in black with like a black surround, which it does kind of work into the camouflage pretty well. But yeah, you still can kind of see the fact that it is the windscreen part. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm really pleased with how it came together and the hydro dipping just finishes it off and gives it a really good look. That was also very low effort. Like I would say, if you are making an army, whether that's Tau or in particular Tau, because I think it works well for hydro dipping and you wanted to save time in your painting process or if you're just not that good at it, then I would recommend doing hydro dipping, but at least for the bigger stuff. I'm going to try hydro dipping on smaller stuff as well and see how well it works actually works out. I think it'll probably just about work on Primaris Marines. I think anything smaller you would struggle with because the detail in the film will be too big for the smaller models. But that is in future videos to follow because now I want to hydro dip everything in my life. You can see the colour difference with having the railgun black as a base coat still, but I actually think it fits in quite well having it a slightly different colour. But I think I'm going to experiment with having different base coats underneath the hydro dipping with this particular hydro dip film to see a comparison of what you actually get. With it being a kit bash, I've still been able to have it on the two stands it came with. The holes are actually still existing from the previous kit. 
And to finish off, I thought I'd compare it in size to some other models, some older models that I had. This includes a regular devil fish, so obviously you can see it's twice the size. And then even compared to quite the big model of a land raider, if I move the devil fish out of the way, put it up to the back. You can see how big of a model it is as a two vehicle kit bash, naturally as it would be. And then compared to an old Valkyrie, it's about the same size as a Valkyrie. It kind of shows how big the Valkyrie was. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope the video wasn't too long because it's longer than most of my normal ones. I really enjoyed doing this kit bash. The Hydro Dipping made it way better. I'm going to put a link in the description below for the products that I bought off eBay for the Hydro Graphics in case anyone wants to try it. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video which will probably be a tutorial on using Hydro Graphics for Warhammer models.